Okay, another example that we are going to uh, have here a circular aluminum tube, as you can see, with length of 400 millimeter, is loaded in compression by uh, forces P. As you can see here, we have forces are being applied from each side, P, here and here. So the outside and inside diameters are 60 millimeters and 50 millimeter. So we have like inner and outer diameter of this tube. So it is like hollow. So one sixty and the inner it is 50 millimeter. A strain gauge is placed on the outside of the bar to measure normal strains in the longitudinal direction. So we, we are having a strain gauge that is being attached to this tube. And actually this is a common uh, practice whenever that we are recording or trying to measure strains in similar tubes. So we are attaching strain gauges from the outside and trying to find or measure the strain that is being developed in this element or this tube under different loading conditions. So requirement A, if the measured strain epsilon equals to 550 times 10 raised to the power minus 6, what is the shortening delta of the bar? So we need to know the shortening of the bar. So this bar, for example, it was with this length after after applying the force, it is going to be with this length. So we know we need to know how much shortening that is going to be going to take place here, which is we are going to call it uh, delta. Okay. And the second requirement is, is if the compressive stress in the bar is intended to be 40 megapascal, what should be the load P? If we want the compressive stress in this bar to be 40 megapascal. What should be the load P in this case? Okay, now let's go to the first requirement and see how we can tackle this. We, won't, we, we know that there is a strain already measured and we want to get the shortening, right? So simply if we could, if we know the length and we already have measured the strain, okay, then we can multiply both. We can uh, as we mentioned before so if we have a relation that uh, relation between the epsilon or the strain and the shortening over L the original length of the member then we can calculate the shortening based on knowing this epsilon and the original length we have original length to be 400, epsilon is already measured to be with this number. Then we can obtain this, uh, this shortening. Let's see it in this way. So this is the aluminum tube and compression. All the input data that already we can obtain from the example are given for us. This is epsilon strain and this is L, the total length, original length. We have D2 and D1, which is the outer and inner diameter, respectively. So, so we want the shortening delta after applying these forces here of the bar. So from this equation, as I mentioned before, shortening equals to this epsilon times L, the original load. We have epsilon with this uh, value, and we have the original length, 400 millimeters. Then we can obtain this uh, this shortening it's, it's going to be 0.22 millimeter 0.22 millimeter and for the compressive load P that is required in the previous in the second one if the compressive stress in the bar is intended to be 40 we want to like control it to be 40 megapascal what should be the load P in this case so we are going to have our uh, sigma or the stress is intended to be 40 megapascal. The area of this uh, of this tube is going to be pi over 4 d2 squared minus d1 squared. Okay, we have the outer 60, the inner 50 millimeter. So we are going to have the area to be 
863.9 millimeters squared. Using this equation, as we know that our stress always equals to P over A, then this means that if we want P, it will equal stress times the area. So 40 megapascal times the area already calculated from previous uh, step. We have here the area that is we are interested in is this area, which is going to be the area, the outer area minus the inner area, okay, as we mentioned here. And then we are going to obtain P equal to 34.6 kilo newton. Take care, take care of the convergence and units. So now again, remember, if we want to control the stresses in this tube based on based on the uh, controlling this load, then the load should not be more than 34.6 kilonewton. In order to maintain a stress, if we want, the stress here, sigma here, to be 40 mega pascal. Okay, so this is uh, something that we can use our stress strain um, understanding or concept or equation. And as you can see, always we are using like the main equations that already we have explained before for stress or for strain. Okay. Okay, this is the end of this problem. We can uh, have another uh, new video later. Thank you.